Evolutionists use comparative anatomy to form their family tree. George Cuvier, the French scientist who founded comparative anatomy, said that Man and animals have a basic similarity in their overall designs. He believed that God intentionally made all things using a basic plan and that the similarities are proof of a single creator. Evolutionists reason that if one thing looks like another, they must have evolved from the same ancestor. That is actually a little damaging to the theory of evolution itself, as an octopus's eyes are more like the stretch of a man's eyes than those of his supposed ancestors. Also, if comparative anatomy was proof of evolution, the chicken should actually be man's closest relative. Isaac Newton himself said, Can it be by accident that all birds, beasts, and men have a right side and a left side alike shaped, except their bowels, and just two eyes, and no more, on either side of the face, and just two ears on either side of the head, and a nose with two holes, and either two forelegs or two wings or two arms on the shoulders, and two legs on the hips, and no more? Whence arises this uniformity in all their outward shapes but from the counsel and contrivance of an author? Whence is it that the eyes of all sorts of living creatures are transparent to the very bottom, and the only transparent members of the body, having on the outside a hard transparent skin, and within transparent humors, with crystalline lens in the middle, and a pupil before the lens, all of them so finely shaped and fitted for vision that no artist can mend them? Did the blind chance, chance know that there, that there was light? light? and what was its refraction. These and such like considerations have and ever will prevail with mankind to believe that there is a being who made all things and has all things in his power, and who is therefore to be feared. The skeletons of man's supposed ancestors in the evolutionary tree were mostly thought of by scientists looking at a single bone or by putting various bones taken from all over the world into one. The Nebraska man is a good example of this, although evolutionists no longer include him in their tree. His whole body structure was based on the tooth of an extinct pig. The fossils that evolutionists have claimed to belong to some of man's ancestors have all been hoaxes, frauds, or mistakes. Besides the Nebraska man, there have been many others. The Piltdown Man was thought of when an amateur fossil hunter discovered a skull and some teeth. It later turned out that someone had placed a man's skull and an orangutan's jaw in the gravel where it could be found. This, of course, was not discovered until after the Piltdown Man had been in the evolutionary tree for 40 years. In 1890, a skull was discovered on the island of Java by a physician named Dubois. He insisted that it belonged to a prehistoric man who lived there about 500,000 years before. Evolutionists soon added this new man to their tree under the name Java Man. Thirty years later, it came out that Dubois had also discovered a modern man's skull in the same layer and had kept the fact hidden the whole time. Because of the almost constant eruptions on Java, scientists said that the skull had to be less than 500 years old. Besides, if the Java man was found in the same layer as modern man, he could not have been one of man's ancestors. In the 1970s, the evolutionist dating process, the potassium-argon method, seemed to be going wrong. Using this procedure, they concluded that a skull, found by Richard Leakey, was about 2.8 million years old. That created a problem, though. The skull looked almost like a modern man's skull although it was supposed to have been older than most of the ape men. Richard Leakey himself said, Either we toss out this skull or we toss out our theories of early man. The Neanderthal man was supposed to be the earliest pre-human, the skeleton forming the body of a stooping man. Other Neanderthal men were discovered, but they were not bent over as the first. It is now believed by evolutionists that the Neanderthal man stood as erect as modern man, a German anatomist, Rudolf Virchow, said that the first skeleton discovered probably belonged to an old man with arthritis. He also stated that the deformity of the skull was likely caused by rickets. Evolution states that everything has gone from simple to complex. Man and animals supposedly became more complicated 
and gradually became smarter and smarter as time went by. This goes completely against the second law of thermodynamics. The second law of thermodynamics states that the entropy disorder of an isolated system, such as the world, will tend to increase over time, approaching maximum equilibrium. In other words, things that are orderly become disorderly over time, when natural processes are allowed to act. A barn will deteriorate, ice will melt, rooms will get messy, and energy will be used. This brings up an interesting thought. If everything is running down like a clock, wouldn't there have been a time when this clock was wound? All evolutionists will have to admit that they believe the first living creature sprung up from a non-living substance. We won't even ask where that came from. Doesn't that go against the second law of thermodynamics? Can ashes turn into wood and then into a house? That's where the theory of evolution would take you if you took it to its logical conclusion. Evolution states that things are becoming more complex and orderly as time goes by. The second law of thermodynamics states just the opposite. Things will keep winding down and down, becoming less and less orderly than they were before. Evolutionists state their findings by looking at the geological column that they created. The column begins with the Quaternary layer, the Thomas layer, and continues down to the Precambrian layer. The layers on the top are supposedly younger than the layers under them, each of them supposedly laid down over millions of years. However, by simply looking at the strata in place, we can see that there is little to no sign of erosion in between the layers, indicating that they were laid down during a much shorter time than millions of years. In some cases, the strata even seems to have been bent. This only could have happened when the layer was still soft as a whole, and could only have happened during a catastrophic hydraulic disaster which fits right in with the worldwide flood.